like to say good morning to all of our brothers and sisters out there in social media land. This is indeed a great day to be alive. This is a day that the Most High Heavenly Father have made. We should at some point throughout the course of this day find ourselves rejoicing and being exceedingly glad. Uh, Most High don't owe us nothing to uh, give us life another day. So that's something that we should be grateful, grateful for. And uh, for somebody out there that might be having a rough time on this morning, I once heard an uh, old guy say, if you think that this day is so bad and so rough, try getting along without it. And so that kind of redirects our focus to understand that we don't have to be here. So uh, even if we go and find ourselves going through trouble, then this is still a great day to be alive. Uh, I wanted to come on here on this morning just to uh, uh, lay a foundation for where we're about to go in the days to come. We're going to be dealing with the book of Yeshua. On this morning, um, we'd like to solicit the prayers of those who are able in their spirit to really make communion with the Father as we get ready to go out of here and try to encourage and uplift another family who have lost another loved one. We ask that you will uh, keep us lifted up in prayer and that the Spirit may have its way, uh, that, uh, that the Messiah's prophecy might come to fulfillment. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall receive comfort. Uh, it's not always an easy thing to go out and encourage people when they're dealing with life circumstances that they classify as being tragic. Uh, nevertheless, it is a pouring out of oneself. And all of us have the responsibility because we become the embodiment of the comfort that the Most High have promised that others would receive as they go into places of mourning. So we want brothers and sisters to uh, you know, to be standing shoulder to shoulder with us. Why do I always say us when it's just me? Because when I say us, we're talking about the twofold nature of one man. One man who operates from time to time in his flesh, and then one man who operates time, from time to time in his spirit. But the two men are inseparable, and they live in one house. And, uh, and so that's why we solicit the prayers uh, when we say us, when they're just talking about that's what we mean. You know, you don't see a crowd of people around. The us is talking about the two. You see, so um, now in the days to come, we're going to go into the book of Yahshua. Now, this book of Yahshua sometimes can be difficult to come in contact with, but you can find it. You can find the book of Yahshua audibly on YouTube, but you have to type in the book of Yahshua. If you try and go to Google and find it, you're going to see the book of Joshua keep popping up. For brothers and sisters that may want to get the book, the book is going to be titled The Song of God. And that's because there are multiple books in here. You have quite a few books. And the book of Yahshua is one of the books. And when I was trying to find them, hard copy of the book of Yahshua, it literally became impossible, and that's because it's not in a single hard copy. It is found in this book right here. So for any brothers and sisters, I encourage brothers and sisters that you have an opportunity to go out there and get these resources and get these books, uh, then do so. Because we're dealing, we're about to start dealing with the life of the Messiah. We're also going to be dealing with the life of John the Baptist, the forerunner uh, that came to lay the groundwork. But we're going to be dealing with the life of the Messiah because he says, my sheep hear my voice and they will not follow another. You see, when you can't hear his voice, you don't have no choice but to follow another. One of the reasons why we so zealous about what we call the Old Testament or Torah or or why we so zealous about the Paulinian epistles. It's because the voice 
of the Good Shepherd have been extracted from the KJV 66 books. To my Christian brothers, to my Christian brothers, we have a scripture for you on this morning, and that was John 21st chapter verses 25 through 24. It's talking about the beloved disciple that Jesus loved, John, the one who would lay his head on his breast. He said, now, I suppose that of all the things that, that the Messiah both did and said, I suppose if every last one of them things that he done could be written down in books, then the world itself couldn't contain the books that would be written. See, many brothers have had their growth stagnated because they have accepted without even uh, using their mind or their understanding. They have accepted mediocre 66 books of the Bible, which are little snippets of the actual things that have taken place. And many of those things, many of those things like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are snippets that are not books, but have been extracted from life scenarios in other books. And so you don't get the full picture. So because you don't hear the, the, the good shepherd's voice, you don't hear his lifestyle. You can't see his lifestyle. You can't see or be exposed to the many things that were done unless you're willing to go outside and then find these other resources. Uh, other than that, you'll be forced to listen. You'll be forced to hear somebody else's voice. And so why do I say to my Christian brothers? Because my Christian brothers have failed to hear the voice of the good shepherd. And if you don't hear the shepherd's voice, you're going to be found listening to another. And there are some simplistic prophecies that the Messiah had given, uh, like this in case. He says, I am coming in my Father's name, and you receive me not. But there is another that's going to come in his own name. Him you will receive. Well, you have to understand who he is speaking of. And you know who he's speaking of by the people who have received him. So, you know, when we tell somebody what the Messiah said, they come back and tell us what Paul said. And so, you know, not to say that there's not noble contents contained in the Paulinian epistles. There are many noble contents contained in the Paulinian epistles. But the Paulinian epistles are the understanding of a man who claimed to speak for the Messiah, but that don't line up with scripture because the Bible says he shall speak for himself and he shall only speak that that he heard from the father. And every time he speak, his sheep will hear his voice and they will not hear the voice of another. Now, if you're the type of person that every time you turn around, you're talking about what Romans said, what Corinthians said, what first Thessalonians said, what Paul said, you are the one who have fallen as a victim to the prophecies that the Messiah laid out because you are now hearing the voice of somebody other than the good shepherd. Now, I know many of these truths sting. They sting like a bee sting when you first hear them. But if people are not quick to just count something as false and then just go look, the book of Proverbs says that a wise man looks well into a matter before he draws his conclusion. And so many people can come up and say, oh, he done veered off on the deep end. He done, who is he saying that, that, that Paul, and, you know what? I ain't said nothing. I just simply put it like that and tell you what we're going to be dealing with in the days to come. We're not going to be dealing with the Paulinian epistles. Neither will we, will, will we be dealing with uh, uh, the Torah or uh, the ancient or the pharmaceutical and the scribe empire, we won't be dealing with that except from a standpoint of opposition because that's where the, uh, that's where the Messiah dealt with it from. So that's going to be important for us to go into this so that we can see. So that when your brothers out here start coming to you with all of these things that uh, our ancient ancestors were doing, then you say, hold up, wait a minute, hold up, wait a minute. I'm hearing the good shepherd's voice, and that right there, the good shepherd was opposing. Well, you don't know. You don't know until you see the life of the Messiah. You don't know what he opposed. You don't know what he stood for. You see, 
and the, and the Bible, the King James Version, had just become like a melting pot where everything is glopped in there, and there are no, uh, it seemed not to be no lines of distinction, even though many of these things where opposition is concerned or written there in the scripture. So for all those that will, that have a desire to, if anybody going to learn, if anybody going to learn, we're going to have to learn from the same, uh, from the same place. Every man going to have to have to learn how to hear the, the, the shepherd's voice on his own because men don't possess nothing. I'm only a man. I don't possess nothing. I don't possess no ability to change nobody's life. I don't possess no ability to be teaching nobody anything. We only have one teacher. So we're just going to open up, open up the scripture and then every man and every woman have the opportunity for, to draw from those things that they are reading. But each one of us have a personal accountability and there's an expectancy. The, the Most High has an expectancy for all of us that are living in this world. He has an expectancy for our lives. Now, whether or not we're going to find our way into the center of his will is purely going to be put in the hands of the individual that has ears to hear and eyes to see. And so we're not here to persuade anybody. We're not here to argue with anybody. We just simply want brothers and sisters to have an understanding of where we going. And if you're a brother or a sister and you don't believe you have chosen to not have your faith put in Yeshua or who the one that who they call Jesus, we'll eventually deal with all of these little misnomers along the way. But if you're a brother or a sister who have chosen not to put your faith in that in that area, then you understand that these videos will not be for you. This platform, this page is going to be for those who are seeking to hear the shepherd's voice so that they can find their way into the Father's will. If you're a Torah center man and you're just intrigued and want to see what a brother has to say so that you can find a way to argue, uh, I'm going to send a warning your way. There's a woe by Jeremiah the prophet. There was a woe unto the man who steals the father's word from his people. And what that means is that every time a brother or a sister who are in a place of disagreement or a place of disbelief of a particular thing come over there and gravitate towards something that you don't really have a mind to be accepting of uh, and, and, and people are trying to learn and people are trying to study and you come over there with a bunch of rigmarole and mess and arguing and all that, you become a distraction that literally steals God's word away from people. Instead of people hearing what they came to hear, now they're distracted and, and word has been stolen from them. So that comes as a warning. There's a woe for brothers and sisters that do that. And we need to uh, give heed to that. So wherever there's an argument, there's a distraction that people can no longer hear what they were supposed to hear. So if you're that type of brother or sister, it would be best for you to just stay within the framework of what it is that you do believe so that other people who believe a particular thing can walk and learn together. So I'd like to say peace and blessings uh, be upon all of you on this morning. Once again, we do solicit your prayers um, for the bereaved family and uh, most definitely that we solicit your prayers for myself that the Spirit of the Most High might give me something that will become valuable for those that need to hear words of encouragement on this morning. Uh, I'd like to uh, remind all of you to go on in there and get that Truth Music uh, uh, app downloaded. Uh, this is Friday once again. Uh, the Truth, Love, and Redemption radio broadcast will be coming on at 6 o'clock p.m. And it will go to 8 o'clock p.m., but we'll be able to have some dialogue, have a discussion in the word and deal with some of the things that are uh, going on in this world. So try to get that out into the hands of, uh, of some of your younger people. Uh, it can very well become an alternative, an alternative for the music. We know we got big fights going on out here now when it comes to the music, you know, T.I. and all of these so-called gangster thug rappers are mad at this one guy. Because he done called them out and called their music wicked and, and, and then uh, showing them how the music have corrupted the whole community and, and how it's, 
gotten, you know what I'm saying, all of this murder and mayhem and, and uh, with the women and all that, and the brother called him out, you know what I mean, because he's a, a guy from the streets. It wasn't pretty the way he delivered that message. Nevertheless, you got plenty of brothers in the uproar. Well, I stand with that brother. I stand with that brother. You know, I stand with that brother 100%. Because unless we understand that the music is the source of the redirecting of our thinking, then we're going to have problems. So every city and every uh, state in, in this country and abroad have been turned upside down because of brothers who are selling out for money, producing anything. They won't call their mothers bitches. They won't, uh, they won't good lives for their children. They wouldn't be found shooting their own kids. They wouldn't be found doing all of these things. And nevertheless, even though that brother was speaking the truth about the damage that this rap music had done to the community, these brothers seem not want to, seem not to want to identify with the damage that had been created and caused at their hands. So it makes no difference whether they identify with it or not. It is what it is. And one day soon, the Most High is going to cut all of them off at the knees. So, so this is one of the reasons why we want to go on and get that Truth Music app downloaded. That Truth Music app is, is streaming down in some odd 130-something countries. So it's, it's a pretty large platform. And uh, in the days to come, there are going to be more good things to come out of there. And so we hope that you'll tune in to Truth, Love, and Redemption radio broadcast, which will be brought to you by Jay Shields, Ray Chantel, in conjunction with Yasharala Nation. I'm your brother, Dimitri Milligan, and I will be your host uh, as we deal with different topics that we have to face in this world that we're living in. So like say, peace and blessings be upon every one of you. This is indeed, once again, a great day to be alive. This is a day that the Most High Heavenly Father has made. We should rejoice and should be glad in it.